live at the iHeart Radio Theater. Let's hear it again for Green Day. Green Day! It's a big day for these guys. The new album, their 13th, is out today. We got the Hell Omega Tour coming this summer, which is going to be all sorts of fun. And I want to introduce you right now to the guys you already know, Billy Joe Armstrong. It's good to see you right now. Mike Dirt. And that guy's trouble right there. That's Trey Cool. Uh. Fellas, thanks for being here. Thanks for coming to the iHeartRadio Theater. Thank you very much. Thanks for having us. Oh, hi, Trey. I, I told you he was trouble. <laughs> yeah, I want to be on a soap opera. This, right here. I was gonna talk about this. I, I want to be on the young and restless. I want to be on the old and hopeless. That's like down the hall. Is it really? So I was gonna talk about this right uh, here. Okay, cool, go All ahead. All right, we just heard the song, Oh Yeah. Which lyrically takes a look at social media cu uh, culture. And on his Instagram the other day, I saw the Billy desperate, desperate to be on a soap opera. Is that true? This is very true, yes. When, when did this lifelong dream of being on a soap opera start? About a day and a half ago. Okay, good. <laughs> good, 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 good. Yeah. Um, this album uh, is so different in so many different ways. I feel like in 2020, if you were going to say Green Day in an election year, but this band's history was going to make an album, people would expect one thing. You guys knew that and decided to deliver something completely different. Is that true? Um, yeah, I mean, we just... Uh... <laughs> Uh, decided. Is this an election year? <laughs> I thought we impeached him. <laughs> it's an erection year. I got bad news, Trey. Yeah, we did some different stuff. So, uh, now we've been lifelong fans of, you know, the history of rock and roll. And uh, um, anything from, like, you know, Motown music to old, like, Little Richard to... Glam rock and hard rock at the 70s and Van Halen in the 80s and, you know, and, uh, uh, and uh, K-pop of the current world right now. So, so we're, we're all about it. I thought I heard a little BTS in, in one of those songs somewhere. Um, Green Day's always been a band. I think part of the reason you've been so successful and you've been around for so long is that you guys have always challenged yourself. What were some of the challenges in making this album? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Finding our way to Butch Walker Studio in the morning yeah. Yeah. after what happened the night before. Yeah, I think it's yeah. just finding your way into new sounds and um, new directions. You know, if it's, uh, if it's a little nerve-wracking and you're not sure, I think that's a good place to be when you're heading into new, uh, new music. But we got a pretty good anchor, so yeah, we I can feel go like anywhere we, we want. We really wanted to uh, give everybody a rock and roll lesson. So... Uh, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, that's just something I grew up on, and it's part of me, and uh, I listen to it every single day, and I listen to new bands and old bands and, and all that, so, uh, yeah, we're just keeping it real or something like that. <laughs> Who said that? Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. Was singing falsetto a challenge on Father of All, the title Yeah, track? yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like... Uh, we recorded, like, the first, you know, part, and then I wanted to do a vocal, and then I was, uh, I was listening to Prince and stuff, uh, like a song like Sister, which is, man, it's a dirty-ass song, so, and then, um, I, uh, yeah, I, I, I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna try, try singing in a, a different way, I didn't want to sound like me, or whatever me sounds like, so I said, told everybody, try not to laugh, I'm gonna try something new, so... Yeah, laughter, maniacal. <laughs> Everybody laughed, so I did it anyway. It worked. Uh, I think it worked out, right? You think it worked out? <laughs> the album is 26 minutes long, and I feel like if you're a new young punk band, you aspire to make a 26-minute album. Tip but I to feel tip. Like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like if you've been around for a minute, though, I feel like it takes kind of a certain 
amount of restraint to get down to 26 minutes? Was it kind of tough to do that? Well, we had like, recorded like 16 or 17 songs, and uh, which will come out at some point. Um, and then we, uh, but I just wanted to, you know, I was just like, well, I'm gonna pick my top 10 favorite songs. And then I just were like, well, that's the album right there. You know, I think, uh, uh, I think album making is always really important to us. Like we're always, we're an album making kind of band. We're not just kind of relying on singles. You, you want to get into the serotonin of like, and drugs of the album and stuff like that. So uh, we, uh, so we got, we, you know, like those are the 10 songs where we're like, man, wow, well, these can be singles. So like, let's just, you know, put out a 10 song record. I checked. One side of a vinyl album holds 22 minutes, so you're four minutes shy of ju just being a side A yeah. for this one, which I thought would have been I think we're two minutes shy of Dookie. Yeah, there you go. There you go. You got to take a shit? Yeah, I got to go in two minutes, literally. <laughs> Prairie dogging over here. Let's talk Hell Omega. Yeah! yeah. The Hell Omega Tour got announced a couple of months ago. In case you haven't heard, Green Day, Weezer, Fall Out Boy, the Interrupters at stadiums all across both the country and the world. It seems like this tour has already been so much fun and you haven't even played any shows yet. Has it been the same for you? <laughs> you yeah, you can taste the electricity. <laughs> you want to talk about that? Hell Omega, man. It's like unicorns puking... Rainbows all over our junk. <laughs> From the fucking time we wake up in the morning until we go to sleep. It's amazing. Um, we got like a bunch of great bands. Like you're gonna get there in the morning, you're gonna be drunk by the time you see Green Day. It's gonna be cool. We should make a Hello Mega cereal. It could be like unic it could be like unicorn poop, and then everybody will really throw up, uh, you know. It will make throw, it in Oakland where, where mushrooms are legal. Yeah. Instead of Skittles, we get a shittles. They're great. When I envisioned this interview, I was hoping there would be all this unicorn talk about things coming out of different things right there. Who's responsible for the unicorn on, on the cover art? Oh, Is that I your handiwork? I, yeah, I drew it. I drew the unicorn. Um, and then I made the logo out of uh, glue. So I figured I was sniffing it, so I might as well make something out of it at the same time. So I put, and then we were, we were at, this is a true story, we were like, what if we fucked with everybody and called the record American Idiot Part Two? <laughs> and and then um, you know, so then I I took I have my copy of it, and then so I was like, well, what if we call it American Idiot Part Two, Father of All Motherfuckers? And then uh, so we just took out the idiot part, and then I put wrote I wrote that in my handwriting out right there, across, and I put some duct tape and like kind of mess with it, and then um, and then we're like, well, you can't you you know because censorship, you can't, you know. And I just said, well, why don't we put a fucking unicorn on it or something? <laughs> and then it's that's... a good unicorn. It's yeah, a yeah, handsome yeah. unicorn. So that's how it came about. It's great. It's Thanks. great. <laughs> just sure. One of the best things about Green Day over the years is that this band has always had that kind of magic touch where you guys could play kind of a dirty, dingy punk rock club in Oakland one night, go to Dodger Stadium the next night, play a, a TV show, radio show in, in L.A. one night, and, and have the ability to connect with the audience uh, on a level that is, 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 is pure emotion and get people to get actively involved. And I was wondering if you could put into words how you're able to do that or, or what it is there that kind of is that connection. The people that come see Green Day are fucking awesome. Yeah. They're the best... Best friends in I the whole world that. right here. I love how you don't pander to people. So. It's great. You're all so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And handsome. Yeah. Great dressers. <laughs> you smell nice. <laughs> Everything's the opposite. <laughs> Mike, you got to take that shit yet? It went back in. Uh, You've all been there. They got another 20 minutes. I was worried about saying the album title. That ship has sailed, I feel like, <laughs> at this point. But um, what, what are you, you going to do? What was the question again? Yeah, we're a oh. rock and roll band. We play everywhere. We, we, 
we love to play music. That's yeah. what we do. Well, that's one of the best things, yeah. That's one of the best things about this band, uh, is that you get the feeling that if you were playing in stadiums or if you were just in your garage, you guys just like playing music together. And it doesn't matter if you're doing covers or Green Day songs or, or whatever. This is because you love music. It's not because of all the other stuff that's sometimes in, involved with this. And it feels like you guys, what well, you guys have given off that feeling for the three plus decades that you've been doing that. And that's absolutely true. Thanks. It's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here. And don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. Bye guys.